Sell your $2,000 DAX, cause the giant killer is here. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today we have something that I suppose a lot of you were eager to see. It's topping E50. It's the latest DAC in the toppings offering. It's quite budget oriented. It's not as dirty cheap as D10S or E30, for example. It's in toppings line, it's that third step. And E50 will basically relieve of the duty the old D50S that was selling for 250 US dollars. This one is slightly more expensive at 270, but let's see what we get for that amount of money. First of all, let me get through these very, very important tech specs. It's based on Sabre DAC chip. It's one of the later ones. It's not flagship grade or anything, but it's a very good one. It supports extremely high resolution and sampling rates. It supports DSD. It supports MQA. It says here on the box too. So don't complain in the comments that I did not mention that the DAC supports MQA. By the way, MQA is glorified lossy compression of a high resolution file, but it's not as good as lossless flag file. And yes, you are paying for it. Actually, Topping is paying to MQA organization for it. So we are all paying for it. That said, it's actually time to comment on its connectivity and it's pretty decent, pretty rich, as you would expect from Topping's device costing around 250, 300 US dollars. First, when it comes to digital inputs, we have all three usual ones, including USB, coaxial, and optical SPDIF. When it comes to the outputs, we have a very normal RCA that single ended out, but we also have balanced outputs, which is first time this class of DAX costing two sumpty, at least in toppings offering, is having balanced outputs. If you're a little bit puzzled because you see here in the back, there are no XLR connectors. Yeah, that's because this is a quite smallish device. And I suppose that Topping didn't have enough space to put these chunky XLR connectors. Instead, they just use this 6.25 TRS connector like this one. And if you're already having XLR cables, I guess you'll have to use adapters similar to this one. And you put one, and then you put the other one and you see it's very, very tight. So they're uh, like fighting for space a little bit, but then you can use your normal XLR cables if you already have them and you don't want to change to another type of cable. Of course, you can buy cables with these type of connectors just right out of the box. These kind are more often seen in pro audio. And that said, let's quickly comment on the front panel. It looks basically exactly the same as topping E30, which is the cheaper model. You have one button. It's a touch sensitive one. So there is no physical feedback if you pressed it or not, but it works really nicely. I didn't use it that much because I found controlling this DAC much easier with provided remote control. Yes, you have that one. Of course, E30 has it, so it was only logical that E50, which is the more expensive one, has it too. So there is nothing really special about it. It's the same topping remote that they use for a long time. You can control display brightness level in three steps. You can control volume if you decide to use E50 as a small preamp, but of course you can leave volume level fixed to a line level output if you're using it as a DAC and you have some other device such as integrated amp, preamp, headphone amplifier, etc. that can control the volume. That would be better option in my opinion. But if you're using it with a power amp directly, then E50 can take that role and can become a preamp too. But yeah, last thing that I wanted to mention is that there are three different digital filters on board. 
And to be perfectly honest, with E50, I didn't notice much of a difference. There are some small, tiny, subtle differences when switching from filter 1 to 2 and 3, but they all sound pretty good and pretty similar to my ear, so I just didn't bother with it. Try it for yourself. And the last piece of information that I want to share with you is that E50 is actually powered with 5 volts DC. That means that the transformer changing current from AC to DC is not located in the unit. Like, for example, it is in D30 Pro, which is bigger, heavier, chunkier. So here you'll have to use an external power supply. But again, the same way the topping did with E30, they did not provide it in the box. They just gave you this small cable, which you can attach to the E50. So yes, you can power it from the USB port of your PC, a desktop, laptop. You can power it from a phone charger too. Any power supply that has five volts and one ampere or higher, that said, if you want to extract the best sound quality out of it, I strongly suggest that you use something a little bit better than PC or phone chargers. That can be, just for starters, iFi iPower. It's a switching power supply, but low noise one. It has higher quality, it has cleaner power, and when used, you'll get darker background and cleaner notes, everything will sound a little bit crisper, more spacious. As I said, if you already spent 270 on this nice DAC, I strongly suggest spending at least 50 more for something such as iFi iPower, power supply, and actually get the maximum of this DAC. So all that said, how does it actually sound? Well, in one word, it sounds pretty darn good. For example, compared to topping E30, that is 140 US dollars. This one immediately sounds livelier. It has punchier baseline. It has livelier dynamics. And in general, it's more, more colorful. That means tone timbre is a little bit richer and it has more bite with tone edges and with highest frequencies. E30, in comparison, is a little bit flatter sounding and grayer sounding tonally. You don't have the same amount of richness in the bass line and same amount of bite and quick energetic edges that you do get with E50S. And the same would go if you compared it to its predecessor, D50S. I said that in reviews of both E30 and D50S, but I'll repeat it here again. E30 and D50S were basically neck to neck, two very similarly sounding decks. Now, D50S is the only one of these three that I'm mentioning that has Bluetooth connection. That is its perk. But sonically, it is not any better than E30. While E50 is definitely better than both. It just has more dynamic, feistier, more colorful sound. Everything sounds a little bit jumpier, a little bit more involving compared to that flatter and less involving presentation of E30 and D50S. But don't worry, it still has uh, that topping sound signature. It's still precise, clear, crisp, and fast, nimble type of sound. It's not something warm and lush and fuzzy and overly soft. It's actually pretty quick and speedy and resolving sound with a lot of details. It doesn't emphasize bass line. It doesn't emphasize highest frequencies. As I said, there's enough of details, but they're never too etchy or uh, too sharp. They have very decent amount of smoothness to them. So we do get resolving, quick, speedy sound, but with decent amount of smoothness and refinement. And that's really great. 
And as I mentioned, if you're using it with a, some really cheap power supply, it will sound more flat and more gray, dynamically less involving, but add a good low noise power supply and things will start to liven up. Baseline will become a little bit punchier, background will become darker, and immediately tones become somewhat fuller and more involving. So I strongly recommend you to do that. But no sound impression is complete, really, if I don't compare it with some of its closest market competitors. So I first started with something that's less expensive, and that's LogGD30. This is the older version with AK chip inside. This one sounds better than Topping E30. It also sounds better than, than Topping D50S. It's more airy, more spacious, slightly more detailed, but E50 finally punches back and it's more focused sounding. It's also a little bit more dynamic. It has more focus. So everything, like if you're listening to strings, uh, bass guitar, or just a usual guitar, every pluck has more energy, it's more focused, it's cleaner than with D30. And the bass line is also tidier, a bit punchier, a bit more sure-footed. So all in all, it was quite easy for me to declare E50 a winner over LogD D30. But the fiercest competitor probably comes from topping itself in a form of topping D30 Pro. As I mentioned, this one is heavier, chunkier, it's more expensive at 400 US dollars, but if you do as I strongly suggest that you should do, and you add a linear or low noise power supply to E50, that will increase its price to at least 320. This one is still more expensive at 400 US dollars, but it uses AC power input so you can hook it directly to your mains. You don't have to worry about power supply. So that said, if you use E50 with some noisy bad power supply such as your PC or smartphone charger, D30 Pro wins easily to my ears. But if you actually upgrade this one, things become much closer and they become neck to neck in terms of sound fidelity with some significant tonal differences. And I'll try to explain these tonal differences. So we are talking about E50 with a decent power supply. In my case, I used Allo Shanti because I have this one, which actually increased the price of E50 and power supply combination roughly to the level of D30 Pro. That said, there are some significant tonal differences between these two. D30 Pro sounds fuller, bassier. It definitely has more punch in the bass line. It has more palpable bass line. So if we are listening to some sort of double bass, for example, with that deep boom, 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 you'll feel that the double bass and its player are more, more palpable in space, like they are being more in your room. While with E50, those notes will be quicker, speedier, but it will feel less present and less palpable. It does not have the same level of punch and density and palpability. Aside from that, there are some other differences too. For example, D30 Pro has narrower soundstage, but it's also deeper. And mid-range is more laid back. Everything sounds a little bit more relaxed. So if you're listening to some natural acoustic recording, it will sound like it's coming from a narrower space, but deeper. And there is no any sort of digital glare or edginess or anything like that with this deep, palpable bass line. It's a very pleasant experience. On the other hand, E50 with a good power supply will sound wider, more upfront. Everything will sound a little bit snappier, a little bit quicker. 
and especially edges of the notes will sound more prominent and clearer. And to be perfectly honest, it's really tough to call which one is better. I think that will completely depend on your own preferences and the rest of your system. For example, if you already have a warmish, really full sounding amplifier, adding D30 Pro to it might be a little too much of that, like overdoing it in that fullness department. E50 might serve you better in that kind of system. On the other hand, if you're having a little very fast, but a little bit lean sounding system, for example, like that um, Class D Yamaha amplifier that I really liked, it's really resolving fast and quick, but lacks a little bit of that fullness and depth and palpability. In that case, D30 Pro will probably be a better match and bring some of that that your amp itself is lacking. And that's why mixing and matching in hi-fi is really important. But what I wanted to say here that E50 without a good power supply is no match for D30 Pro in my opinion, but with a good power supply it is. It completely is all in all comparable level, but different approach and different tonality. I don't have it currently with me, but SMSL SU8S is actually much closer in terms of tonality to E50 than topping D30 Pro is. Both E50 with a power supply and SMSL SU8S, which again has power su supply bundled in the box together with the deck. So again, it's pricier, but you immediately get whole package. So SU8S and E50 are, wow, neck to neck. Both are quick, snappy, really resolving with wide sound stage, open and airy, but not overly sharp. I guess it comes to which one you like more. Maybe you like one of these brands more. Maybe you appreciate that you can buy this one at a cheaper price and then later upgrade it with a better quality power supply. But on the other hand, SU8S offers full XLR balanced outputs, while this one offers these space saving solution that you, you would need to use these sort of adapters to use a very standard XLR cables. So it is a choice, but when it comes to sound fidelity, SMSL SU8S and topping E50 with decent power supply are so closely matched that there is just no way for me to choose one over the other. I leave it up to you. I gave you the information, you think about the rest. Going even higher than that, in terms of pricing, we stumble upon topping the 70S. That one has a really similar tonality to E50, but it is slightly better in all regards. For example, bass line is simply deeper and punchier and definitely more palpable than E50 with any sort of power supply. And this 70S again is slightly more resolving with quicker, clearer transients. It's also dynamically livelier it presents music with, with more of these ups and downs. And when it goes up, it goes a little bit clearer and crisper. And when it goes down, it has more weight and it has more punch. The difference is not huge, but it's there. E50, with a good power supply, I repeat, is a little bit flatter and it smooths things out a little bit. It cannot completely match what D70S can do. Now, don't be fooled about these claims of this being giant killer and having the same, I don't know, specs and measurements as D90S. I actually never heard D90, but I did test D70S and I'll tell you right out of the bat, D70S is a better deck. 
if you can afford it and if your system can actually pass that quality through. Because if you are maybe using this in some sort of entry-level system, you might not be able to notice differences between E50 and D70S. And that actually leads me to the conclusion, E50 for 270 US dollars, plus decent power supply for 50 bucks. I strongly recommend it. So I'll call this a really decent combination for 320. Is it a giant killer? No, it's not. D70S sounds better. It has the same tonality, it has the same quick, speedy presentation, but it does it better. All that said, E50 actually comes at a slightly lower cost than anything that is comparable in sound quality, which is actually a great position to be in. Together with the power supply, it's 320, and it's definitely matching DACs that are costing 350 or 400 US dollars. It's a very noticeable step up from these budget E30 and D10S. It's definitely a step up from the previous generation D50S. It's in the line with a really decent DAX that are slightly more expensive than it. It is an awesome DAC for the amount of money Topping is asking for it. And if you're not put off by these small, not that common, balanced outputs, I have no troubles recommending it. And with that, it's time to finish today's review. I hope you liked it. If you did, click that button, share it with your friends, and please consider becoming a patron because that really helps this channel grow and stay independent and bring you more unbiased reviews. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.